I'm over at my dad's house at the moment. I'm gonna uh, grab my bikes out. I need to steal some parts off of one of them. I also need to steal some parts out of some boxes that I've got stored here at the moment. So I'm just gonna do that now. So this is my Yamaha RXS 100, which is a bit of a project, but uh, I might be selling this soon, which would be sad to see it go. And this is my other project, the one that will be stealing parts off of, hopefully. So this is a Kimco K-Pipe, uh, it's a 125 semi-automatic pit bike engine supermodel. It was in an accident or it was dropped or something and landed on the side casing and split the side casing. So the guy took the engine out of it and then left it as a project, never really got around to fixing it. So I bought it off him as it is now with no engine. And my plan was to put an engine in it. I had one of these on my first bike and I bought it brand new. It's the only other ever thing I've ever, ever bought brand new. Nostalgia made me want another one, so I bought this one. Cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Right, I need some bits. Exactly what I meant. I don't think that's really meant to come out. It's a hell of a lot cleaner than mine, anyway. This is my um, Yamaha RXS, by the way. I don't think you guys really saw it very well there. Uh, it's been a project for a long time going on, but my plan was to put a big plate here and then just have these switches all mounted up. It doesn't have any front lights, but the rear light's still here. I made a little tail tidy for it, it holds all this stuff up nice. As you can see, like down here, holds it all up, but yeah, probably going to get sold, sadly, and I rebuilt this drum and everything. Um, but it sat around for a long time, I fully rebuilt the engine and uh, did a lot of stuff on it, but never got around to finishing it. Needs a pair of tyres, because the tyres are all cracked up from being sitting. But other than that, it's in pretty good nick make a good project. In fact, if someone doesn't buy it soon, I might just have to get it running myself because I'm sick of seeing it sitting here. All right guys, so this is the new fuel tank. Um, as you can probably tell, it's gonna be a lot smaller than the, the other one on there. And it's not exactly off uh, an AGS Regal, so it might take a little bit of work to get it to fit. There we go. Okay, and it's got a fuel tap as well, which is what I asked for. Awesome. This was a, a grand total of fifteen pounds for this. I'm getting an exact copy of one of these it was about a hundred and something, I think. All right, let's get the rest filled. He's nicely attached. It's beautiful. There we go, look at that. The guy was like, oh, this is all scratched up and stuff, that's why it's so cheap. It looks great. I don't know what he's on about. It's got a functioning gas cap. Look at that. I've no idea how high Moto is, but they can stay on there. Why not? Right, let's get the old one off. It's just sat on there at the moment, I think. So this is the debate I've been having with myself for the last few days, is whether I have it. If I do it like this, it'll be a piece of piss, because this bolt will line up nicely with that, that threaded section. But what I want to have it like is sat all the way up there. So it's on the top, like that. Also, this steering stop still isn't fixed, so just gonna bang onto that all the time. 
So, as much as I like it up here, it's where I want it in the long run, I don't think I'm going to be able to secure it there without doing some fabrication to the frame. I don't know. I th it will fit down here. It fits there. So, I'll at least have a functioning, working bike. Uh, and I can bolt it up there nice and easily. And I think I'll probably just run some zip ties around the bottom. So I'll hold it in place. But it'll look ugly as anything. But it's the price you pay for a working motorbike, you know? At least I can ride it around like this. And then later on I'll move it up here. I was trying to stop the handlebar from coming around and cracking my brand new fuel tank because the other way obviously is the steering stop, this way it does not. But I've managed to fix it by uh, putting a big old thick washer on here and then bending this tab down a little bit. I missed it a couple times as well, but the paintwork wasn't very nice to begin with, so we won't worry about it. Um, yeah, which was just holding this this uh, brake hose in place, put that back there, um, but this now hits fouls on this, which is quite close there, you can see, but you know, whatever. Uh, so we'll see how long that lasts before the this bends or whatever, but it should do for now, what stopped it from swinging all the way around, which is good, save my fuel tank getting dented. Got a zip tie on, on this side and a bolt on the front. I might put that bar and mirror on, that's why this, this is off. If you're wondering, I've got um, some super special bar and mirrors that I've had for a very long time. So I've just been trying to fit this um, bar and mirror, as you can see here, that I have had for about six years in this nice package. From memory, I had this for a project and uh, I ordered them from China and they were really cheap. And I was like, ah, they'll do. Um, and they took so long to get there that I had finished the project, uh, got bored of it and sold it. Uh, <laughs> and so these have just sat around in my garage for literally years. Um, and now I've finally got a project to put them on. But I don't really like all bikes that have two, so I guess I'm just going to have one spare. So I'm just going to put one on the left-hand side, because why not? Um, so I've cut the end of this, I got a, I got my pair of pliers and just slipped this over the end of the pliers and then cut the end off with a, with a scalpel that I borrowed yet again from my mum's toolkit because apparently my mum has more tools than me when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, now I'm just going to slip this back on, put this back in place and then tighten it up and so it won't wobble about obviously. I'll get this off the stand drain some of the fuel out of that tank into that tank and then we'll go a run I guess why not um oh look at that saved it already uh <laughs> I've just plumbed up the fuel tank as you can see uh all I've done is cut the line that was on it in half and bang in a fuel filter that I had I'm not, I've never really used these fuel filters before, so we'll see how it goes, but it should be okay. I haven't put any clamps on anything yet because uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this filter or this pipe or this setup, I might make it a bit shorter because it does flap around a bit. I just didn't want it to kink because it goes out that way and then has to do a, a 90 and then a 90, and, or sorry, a 180 and then a 90. So yeah, I just need to put in some fuel now, I think. You're wondering what my setup is here at the moment. This is where I'm filming from, or that chair, where I'm currently draining fuel out of the old tank to go into the new tank. <clears throat> also, you can see where this, this fuel tank has been getting absolutely clobbered by the, by the steering stop spinning around. It's absolutely being clobbered down here. This, the condition of this tank is one of the main reasons I didn't want to try and fix it again, because it's just trash. So I've just stuck some fuel in it, and as you can see, coming through nicely. Uh, I just switched it off overnight because there's still no gasket in here. Or there is, sorry. I put, uh, I put the homemade gasket back in. Seems to work at the moment. Uh, what I'm thinking about is getting a VM22 uh, for here. Um, 
and with a manifold and everything that's port matched because uh, they're only like 35 quid or something and you can get like the full kit even with the throttle and everything or I might clean up the carburetor off the Kimco and put that on with the manifold and everything I don't know yet we'll see yeah but it should be ready to go I ain't gonna go out tonight though because the front headlight's still a bit wonky and as you can probably tell the sun is going down I need to do a little run into my local town tomorrow so I'll take this on a little ride put some fuel in it make sure it doesn't leak out or anything all right so I was riding along happily and then uh, all of a sudden the uh, exhaust made a nice big pop big old bang and uh, then it just stopped running and I've also noticed since it's sat here that it's got a decent sized fuel leak from the carburetor still so so I need to replace that like ASAP that gasket I thought it was okay but apparently not I've tried to figure out what the hell's wrong with it it's, just, it's getting fuel I mean obviously feels pissing out so much fuel in there um, the electrics all seem okay the like the key hasn't jiggled loose the none of the connectors have come off or anything like that uh, the engine still got compression because when you kick it over you can feel it still got a fair amount of compression but I've tried to get a spark out of the HT lead and I can't it doesn't help that I'm in the middle of nowhere as well so and I've not got any service on my phone either so this is gonna be a long walk back I think I reckon uh, but I'll keep you guys updated, I guess. Uh, nice thing about this is it's quite easy to push. Yeah, I'm having to push up this road with a load of tractors and stuff. Just had to jump off the road because of the tractor. And as you can probably tell, this isn't a very wide road, so I don't really want to meet a tractor coming the other way at 20 mile an hour. Or something's gone in the ignition system, so it needs a proper look at. I can't fix it on the side of the road with no tools. And now we play the waiting game. I've got home and picked up the Delica and the dog. And my mum as well. And uh, I've cleared out some of the back of it. So I've got enough room to put it in there. Now it's us all loaded up. So let's leave this lovely place and uh, get back home. Right, mum? <laughs> Where are you? What are you doing? What? Stop wandering around the neighbor's garden. Oh, all right then, just... Don't worry guys, I have spoken to my neighbor and made sure he's okay with the cat just sunbathing on his patio. I think it's probably because there's a big old motorbike in this patio, so she'd rather stay in that one. The first video when I said we need to do the wiring on this yeah well this is kind of what I meant uh, this wire comes out here and is soldered to this wire which is about what, uh, two inches long and then it is being twisted and taped to the ignition coil I'm gonna need to do something about this really uh, I mean the twist and tape job looked fairly solid to be honest so I've got a feeling that's not going to be it I might even trace the wires back and see how how uh, sketchy the rest of it is It's 
a new day. Uh, I'm not going to change any of the parts on this. I'm just going to tidy all the wiring up and um, take the carburetor off and rebuild it with a new gasket. I'm not going to put a new loom on it or anything. That was my thoughts yesterday. I was thinking I'm just going to buy a, a loom online, but I honestly I don't really want to throw much money at this thing right now since I've only done a grand total of 30 miles on it according to the speedometer anyway so uh, also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get um, my regulator and my coil and I'm gonna tuck them underneath and make sure the earths are good as far as I'm aware they earth through the body on both sides but I'm gonna put them up up in there uh, keep them out of the out of the wet uh, even though it's lovely weather at the moment it's not usually like this in Scotland so uh, I'll try and get them out of the way. I might, I'll bend this horn bracket out of the way as well because it's sat, it was, the horn was sat right up in here blocking all this space. Uh, so I don't know why that was the case. I'll just bend the horn down to here. I also need to fix these indicators because this one, as you can hear, the bulb's just rattling around and this one broke off when I was putting it in the van yesterday. So I don't really like putting stuff in the van because, you know, there's, there's always a chance you're going to knock something off or you know, bend something or whatever. Yeah, let's get on with it. Let's get started. Oh, All I did is pull it off, um, pull it apart. Sorry for the sniffling, I've got hay fever at the moment. It's kicking my ass right now. Uh, pull this off, uh, replace this because I found the old one was cracked. I changed all the jets out just for giggles really. Um, just to see if it makes a difference. The other ones that came out of the this carburetor were nicer even though the actual bowl and everything were pretty gross you can see the bowl here it's pretty gross you can't smell it but it stinks uh, i used a bit of white spirits paint thinner to clean stuff up in not ideal i know but take what i can get right now uh, this is the manifold i was going to change it over and then i realized that it's got this little spigot which I think it must have been for the fuel pump on the Kimco. I'm not going to use it on this because the one that's on here is perfectly adequate, does the job. And honestly, it's a lot uh, smoother bend. Uh, if you look at the other one, it's a very tight radius. So I'd rather have a smooth bend in there. Um, and there's nothing wrong with this either. They seem to both be the same size. It seems to be the same size as this, this uh, insulator in here as well. So we're not going to have a big step or anything. Uh, fit the new gasket in here. I've turned the fuel on and as you can probably see doesn't appear to be any leaking yet. So this gasket in here uh, I pulled it out of the the old uh, Kimco bowl here and it was a bit flat but it had expanded in the uh, in the fuel over time so it was too big for the bowl here uh, so I ended up cutting it I'm just cinching it together, but I made sure to cut it and cinch it together on like right here so that it uh, hopefully it won't leak out that side when the bike is lean set up. So, yeah, what are you up to? Peeps, what are you up to? What? So I've got an issue with this at the moment where the clutch lever is not returning correctly. 
which means the clutch isn't actually engaging properly. So you can see here, if I pull on the clutch, I've, I've loosened this off because it's not going all the way back now. See this is loose? And you watch down here, and see if I push that down. This stiffens up. It's because the, the clutch lever itself isn't returning, this spring isn't strong enough to return the clutch fully into the engaged position. Uh, the previous owner has put a pair of springs and then hose clamped it down to the frame, which isn't ideal. Uh, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is take one of the springs and hose clamp it directly down so it has more force going directly down the actual way it's meant to go. Uh, no doubt there's something wrong with the clutch in here and it needs taken apart, but I don't have I don't have a new clutch, I don't have a new gasket for this outer seal, so even if it's just something I need to go in and clean up and whatever, I still don't have uh, any of the gaskets for it. So if I tear a gasket coming off, that's this bike off the road until I get a new gasket. Uh, so I don't really want to do that. Uh, also my air filter fell off the other day while I was on an extended test drive. You can see since I got the speedo working I've done 157 kilometers. Uh, as you can see I've done all this, got rid of all the wiring up here and then I've just looped this round so it's just uh, sort of tucked out of the way, tucked up under here. So you can see now the coils there, the Regular rectifier is in here. I've test ridden it since then, and it's perfect. Drives great. Uh, I need to get an air filter on there, as I said, but I took it on a long test drive, like 60 kilometers, and it was great. Drove really well. Uh, all I need to fix is the clutch, because it, it only does it when it's cold as well. Uh, once it's warm, I think that level of, of uh, engagement is enough for it. But sometimes when you're going up a hill and you're in a gear that's too low, you can hear the clutch slipping and it, the engine revs kind of pulse. Uh, so you can hear the clutch slipping a little bit when it's really put under a bit of load. So, yeah, need to get that sorted. But as I say, I'm going to probably bodge it for now. Right, I'm going to have a go at fixing this um, clutch. Oh, God. I thought I was done with this this uh, video series anyway and then all of a sudden this started happening I thought I could just start to actually enjoy riding the bike for a little while nope hmm I see the issue now I need a longer spring really or it's like less stiff spring, really. Right. So I guess we have to go with two springs. It's a pain. Uh, I just need to figure out where is best to put them. I don't know. I'll come back to you when I think I have something. All right, so I've come up with a solution. It's not ideal, but I've just got the spring and tucked it under the brake return spring for the brake lever uh, because I could get just under the edge there and then I have cut these down and looped them so that all I did is held them put a screwdriver through between these and then bent it over so it's a bit shorter and then I have looped these two together like a key ring um, so that it effectively makes one long spring instead of connecting two springs, which is sketchy because they could end up bouncing off or whatever. Uh, and then I've just put this end over the actual arm itself. Uh, and that's it, and it seems to work pretty well. I'll give you a little... So you can see there it is moving. Uh, it is returning pretty well. We'll see how that works. I just need to put this brake light for the rear back on. I'm going to check this works um, because I've noticed that the rear brake light isn't lighting up when I put my foot on the brake and it might be that it's just really because it's just hanging loose it might not 
be triggering it, but it also could be that uh, this brake light switch is dead. I uh, switch the ignition on and you can see the light is working, so it's just... So the switch and the electrical side of it is all working just fine. It's just that the uh, the adjustment or the connection or whatever uh, isn't very good down there. So I'll see if I can bodge something together. So this is what I've come up with in the end. Um, this is my brake light switch. I've ended up just putting two big washers on there to space the switch a little bit further. And then I've bent the, the end of the springs over so that they're quite tight. Uh, and now you can see that when I put my foot on the brake, Uh, this cable here is pretty shagged, to be honest, but it still works. Um, it had a lot of movement up here. This section was moving a lot, uh, so I've just cut this washer up, just stretched it round and then pressed it back together. So now there is a little bit less movement in that cable. Still a little bit, but there was quite a bit before. So hopefully that should help with the brake as well. Uh, give less play. I'm out here at the moment doing some uh, research for an article I'm writing. I had to go up a bunch of dirt roads, and even though I have a perfectly capable off-roader in the Mitsubishi Delica, I decided to take my uh, my little motorbike. I'm uh, surprised at how well the motorbike, the AGS, does off-road. Um, it is a bit skittish when you get on the big gravel chunks, but generally it's pretty damn good. Um, on this kind of stuff, this kind of... Um, grassy gravel it's amazing it goes really well uh you know i mean it's not dirt bike territory but it's still good surprisingly good for a piece of crap that is the brakes all seem to work and the brake light seems good so you've just watched uh me putting a new carburetor on this new fuel tank um in the last episode we did uh we sorted out the brakes i've gone through it and checked all the nuts and bolts uh, I've rerouted some of the wiring, connected the horn up properly, done a lot of little bits and bobs, sorted out the brake light switch. Um, just little things that I can get done without ordering a lot of parts. Uh, one thing you haven't seen me do yet is put an air filter on here, because the air filter that was on it uh, flew off. This is probably going to be it for the, for the series for now. The end of this third episode is going to be the finals uh, episode in this first section. Don't take the fact that this is the end of this series as this is the last of my videos for a couple of months I'm going to try and do some videos of my Mitsubishi Delica I'm going to try and do some how-to videos um, the next section is probably going to be me getting it back up to Glasgow and back up to my workshop so I can start to strip it down and do bigger things like hardtail the rear change the engine out put a proper fuel tank on it I've also been keeping an eye on the speedometer and after some mental maths so I'm not going to say this is accurate, but after some mental maths, this takes about four and a half litres. Uh, for one tank, I managed to get uh, 130 kilometres, 140 kilometres. So I'm going to say it's around about 100 miles to the gallon. I'll put up on the screen if I've messed that, that, that calculation up. But I think it's around about 100 miles to the gallon, which is great. It's amazing because I'm barely getting 30 in my van uh, and it's diesel. So diesel is more expensive in the UK than petrol so for me to be getting less than 30 miles to the gallon uh, to use this instead for small journeys is a lifesaver at the moment um, so that was the main reason I bought it or that was the excuse I used to treat myself to a new toy uh, was that it would save me money on fuel I do also have some other motorbikes that I will possibly be making a project out of the RXS that you may have seen further er, earlier in the video 
uh, that is going to be sold and that's going to be gone I'm afraid. Uh, I very much like that bike and I would have liked to have made a whole series about it. I did want to put uh, an RD engine into it, Yamaha RD 250 or 125 or something. Um, but it's, I have three bikes, I don't need three bikes. I've been getting a lot of interest in my other one, my Kimco, the one you saw me steal the carburetor off of. And I have considered it, but I think I'm probably going to keep it um, and do a series on that um, and just buy myself. Maybe I can get a buy one, get one half price deal from Welsh pit bikes or something, get myself two YX140s, one to go in this and then one to go in my Kimco. But I doubt that somehow, but uh, that would be nice. And then I can go through a whole uh, replacing a pit bike engine uh, series with you guys uh, and turn that thing to, into a really cool supermoto. I think that'd be really fun.